Hey guys, boy here, and this is 716's new technology, the Mid Dazzle. As most of you guys know, I'm streaming every single day. I'm casting high more pubs, and that's because I'm not sponsored by Pug anymore, and I'm trying to make ends meet by becoming a caster. If you're interested in high more pubs, you can even vote which player and which hero we're gonna be casting. So tune in on my stream and uh, see what you think about it. Before I begin this video, let me explain myself. Today was supposed to be an offline video, but every single top three offlaner was either not playing in their account or they were spamming Pangolier. I don't understand the hero enough for me to make a video about it, so after seeing this funny game, I decided to make a new technology video. First of all, be aware that this is a random draft game, so mid one probably didn't have a lot of options left, but even then, he last picked this hero, which means that he saw some potential versus Kanka in the mid lane, as well as a counter to Trill. We will talk more about it, let's watch how it unfolds. Kanka is known for being one of the strongest mids of this patch, but since he's a mid hero, Dazzle actually has some stuff going on for him. The fact that Kanka needs to get close to get the creeps, and the fact that Dazzle can heal himself, work in a way where the trades are fairly even. A level 1 is not that great, so let's fast forward slightly. You can see that mid one took a beating in the early levels, but this hero has some stuff going on for him. First, he can harass Kanka and get easy range creeps he has when he draws aggro, thanks to the way Shadow Wave works. Since Kanka's damage is bursty and not constant, after Tidebringer, mid one can zone Kanka out of the lane with Shadow Poison as well. As a mid hero, you only care about harass and lane push. Grave is a great skill, but it doesn't allow him to do much damage and it just buys time for him to die. The cooldown is huge at level one, which means that early into the game, in a solo lane, it can be a complete waste of a skill. Mid one maxes both Shadow Wave and Poison Touch into level weight, ignoring every other skill, and you can see why. Here he gets the range CS, while also denying his own range CS, and he doesn't care that much about Tidebringer, because every time he gets cleaved, he heals pretty much that same damage with the Shadow Wave, while also harassing Kanka, and sometimes even healing the creep to the point where Kanka doesn't get the CS. His hero attack animation is actually solid, allowing him to get CS nicely into the lane, and thanks to the sustain from Shadow Wave, after getting every CS, he can go win with Poison Touch like this, and destroy the Kanka. With the changes, where it reapplies as long as you attack, it has to be a hero attack by the way, the traits start becoming terrible for the enemy mid, and with the aid of Batrider, they get a kill here. In fact, when Trian tries to go in and help, the cooldown reduction buff on Shadow Poison allows him to hit both heroes, making it a 2 -fold. As long as you're relatively healthy, Poison Touch dissuades anyone from trading with you, and mid one just keeps abusing his decent base damage with the fact that Shadow Wave deals damage around creeps to harass and dominate the lane. Since you shove the lane that well, he even gets a bottle without boots to always have sustain versus Kanka. When he takes more harass than he would like, he even backpacks the new talismans while balling. With the buffs to bottle, and the fact that this hero is so many reliant, doing stuff like this definitely puts you ahead. Look how insanely strong this hero is at level 6 even without boots. The living armor melts in half a second, and he takes Kanka out of the lane while forcing a support TP. Yes, he takes tower damage, but he has so much region that he doesn't care. The fact that 4 Radiant heroes are melee heroes allows mid one to keep harassing the heroes that go for CS from safety while also scaling himself. If you think I'm over exaggerating when I say that leveling 404 is a good build, look at mid one here. He's chilling mid, he gets level 8, commits the skill. Note that Kanka uses his bolt, so he's under run buff, so he's taking 40% less damage. And also note that Trian commits living armor, that Kunka should have ridiculous effective HP, but this double new talisman dazzle just boops him to death. He takes the aggro away, boops him again with all drawing aggro since he is behind the creeps and he goes for it before the creep dies. Then as the aggro goes for the next one, he repeats while healing the creep close to Kanka and yep. This is not the first time people try to make carry dazzle work, OG did in a professional game, but with the new buffs to the hero and this different approach without treads, without drums, and intelligence heroes in general getting some buffs to mana region and some buffs to more mana, and this particular melee matchup just makes it look pretty good. The level discrepancy starts getting huge because of mid one's crispy play. Kanka gets back, and when he goes for a CS not only he gets damage, but he doesn't get the CS he wants, while mid one mitigates the damage from the cleave. When mid one doesn't have heal cooldown, he leaves the lane, but when he does, there it is again. This Kanka just came back from the dead, and he's already 35% HP. One of the reasons this hero started being experimented in the core role is that at level 10 he gets a 70 damage talent on a hero with a great attack animation, great agility, and great agility gain. It's scary, and look what happens when he pushes the wave here. Kanka sets up a good trap with Triant,
but the damage output with Weave is insane. He makes sure to Shadow Wave when Kanka is close to creeps, and he just melts. You might think that this hero has to be something super clowny that just doesn't work very often, and that might be true, but this game was not a stomp, it was even throughout most of it, and you can see how mid one was able to scale very highly, especially against a hero like Troll, where you would never think that Dazzle could actually just solo kill a Troll, and it happens. They are pressuring bottom here, and with Weave, they, they are fairly confident taking this fight. Poison Touch slows for 20% for 7 seconds, and thanks to the face boots and four staff and the weave armor, he kites Radiant super hard. Those short cooldowns allow Dazzle to fight at all stages of the game, and thanks to all the sustain, they just overpower Radiant. It looks super clowny, but since Dazzle's spells are so low cooldown, they can dive towers with Weave, and as long as they're playing together, this hero with that many levels is a force to be reckoned with. And as you watch this, you're like, yeah, they won, but Dazzle is an early game hero, this was just a stomp. It might look like it right now, but this game lasted for almost 50 minutes. They lack a lot of tower damage, which is why the game, I guess, lasted for so long, since they have all those heroes that don't really right-click towers, and that might lure you into a path that mid one did not follow, so we'll talk more about it. Dazzle even has a Desolator cosmetic, right? Right? He has Minus Armor, he has Physical Damage Spells, let's just double down on Minus Armor. Especially in a game like this, where they lack tower damage. The thing about Dazzle is that he doesn't lack damage at all. Weave, if you do not know, doesn't get cancelled by BKBs and can also be applied through BKB. On top of that, Shadow Wave goes for BKB, meaning that the only skill this hero has that gets nullified is Poison Touch. This is one of the reasons for him not to get Poison Touch Damage Talent at level 20, and why he gets the extra Shadow Wave Talent at level 15. First of all, everyone will have BKB when you're level 20 to get that Poison Touch uh, Talent, meaning that your talent is pretty much useless. Moose Speed helps greatly versus Doom and Troll in kiting him even when you get Doom. Also, even though 20 Shadow Wave Damage and Heal seems bad or too little, it allows you to clear waves super fast with only one hit on each creep, greatly increasing your farming speed and your wave push as well as damaging fights since they have an Undying, so they have a lot of zombies and that really ramps up as the game unfolds. As a frontline in Dazzle, you don't really care about cast range anyways, so this is probably the reasoning to all the talents until level 25, we will talk more about the other one. His second item of choice is Shadow Blade, not only this allows him to kite heroes like Doom, Shadow Blade doesn't get dispelled by Doom and the cast point is instant, so you can usually use it and get away, and you can get kills by finding heroes like Kanka. As we talk about this, they gotta kill top, and then he TPs on tier 2 bottom, and look how quickly he destroys Kanka here. The attack speed from Shadow Blade really synergizes with the damage talent, and when you have the move speed talent, you're flying around the map with this Shadow Blade. This fight here showcases why the Hurricane Pike is so good. That early, it allows you to disengage from the troll, And you can clearly see how the extra attack range when Weave is applied on throw allows mid one to melt the enemy carry. It's insane really, but since this hero is so out of meta, most carries don't really know how to deal with that BKB piercing minus armor. Ideally, you have to disengage, but since the hero is not popular, they just don't know and they die. Since mid one is that fast with all those items, even without the move speed talent, he reaches this fighting time to grave Amber, completely turning it around. During the entire game, really, you will notice that as long as Dyer fights for long enough for Weave to be applied, they just win the fight. And that's why he goes for Lincolns. It's great versus Kanka and Doom, the only heroes that can lock him down or take him out of the fight or disallow Weave to be used. And the mana region is also very important on this hero. There's some long ass fights and you also need to push waves. And if you don't have it, you might end up in a fight where you're like 10% mana and then this hero is garbage. I do feel like a lot of this game being that good for mid one is them having Undyne and Radiant having four melee heroes. But it's fun to see this working. Dazzle hitting like a truck even without damage items with Hurricane Pike. Then chasing Troll as if he's playing Crystal Maiden. One of the biggest fights of this game starts with mid one's Shadow Blade. He spots the Punny here and they take him down while he has Aegis.
Since he has Aegis, it's the Ember that gets doomed, but even then, thanks to the buyback, and we've been available so often, allows them to keep fighting and taking fight after fight after fight. Yes, they like the siege potential, but I don't see mid one getting to where he is without any of these items. This fight, for instance, showcases very well how these items work for mid one. The Lincolns blocks Doom, and he makes sure to weave Doom. Note that he has 500 move speed with face boots, which means that with Poison Touch, he kites every single Radiant hero easily, and as weave grows, he just melts the enemy off lane. While Ember dies even with Grave, keep watching how Lashrek dies to one attack on one Poison Touch. It looks green, but just keep watching. Mid one casually weaves from the other side of the screen, dissuading Radiant to push any further. That's until one dying TPs to the shrine and gets instantly caught by the Shadow Blade troll. The thing is, Weave was on him for a long ass time, and at this stage, Weave is taking like minus 20 armor from that troll, and Mid one is hitting for 300 damage every attack. All of this happened before the level 25 talent, which increases Weave's potential by almost 50%, and it's own armor taken away and armor given, which just makes Dire impossible to be killed by those right-click heroes. Usually, Kanka wouldn't mind that much being against a Dazzle since he cleaves, but Mid one just destroyed the lane so hard that the Kanka never really got online. You can clearly see it over and over again. Troll is a hero, and I guess Kanka to some extent, that when they pop their BKBs, they're unkillable. But in this mid-fight, Kanka, even after getting the run buff and BKB, just melts to the Dazzle. Not only is mobile enough to keep up with the hero, the damage output is insane, and they eventually win the game. So guys, I'm a little bit thorn. Some people like that the rest of the replay is available at the end of the video, some people don't. So I started thinking on whether you guys would be interested in another YouTube channel where I upload the entire replays that I use there. The question is not whether you like it, but if you prefer to have it there or you're fine with either watching it in the game or watching the rest of the game here. It would be a lot of trouble, so I kinda would like to see like a massive reaction towards uploading the replay somewhere else. But I mean, I don't know, let me know. There, there's some people kinda complaining about it and I'm not really sure what to do. As as always guys, if you want to know what's going on with my life, if you want to see some Dota tips or shit posts, follow me on Twitter. If you want to see me cast or play Dotes, follow me on Twitch. I'll be casting uh, DAC and I really, really would like you guys to be there, so stay tuned. If you want some spoilers about my life or what's the next video, Instagram is the way to go. And if you want to talk about Dota with people that care about your crispy boy and Dota itself, join our Discord channel. There's a lot of people there and a lot of cool people. That's it guys, hope you had a good time and bye.